Before the video begins, make sure you're subscribed to see more natural history content like this. Hit the bell icon to keep yourself in the loop and leave a comment if you feel like it. What if I told you that at this very moment, an army of miniature spiders is living in a sack of their own making in your home, your yard, maybe even your bed? A sack-weaving spider that hunts down and chows down on eggs. An entire family of 500 species of itty-bitty creepy crawlies that are entirely harmless. Yeah, well, most spiders are harmless. Even the deadly ones are harmless unless you piss them off. But there is an army of particularly small spiders that are entirely harmless to us. In fact, they offer us the best service we could ask for. Pest control. Obviously, you have cellar spiders and the non-spider daddy long legs, but there are plenty more, like jumping spiders and an elusive but universal group of spoons called ghost spiders. Well, just like with a bunch of other spider groups, the naming of them is a bit helter-skelter. Scientifically, these little invertebrates are called anyphanids. They are often called sack spiders because of their curious habit of weaving a silken sleeping bag to rest in during the day. They are mostly nocturnal and come out of their bags to feed at night. The group is also specifically called the anyphanid sack spiders because there's another group of spiders, the Clubionidae, that were the first ones to be called sack spiders. That means the Clubionidae are the true sack spiders. Among the anyphanid sack spiders, the genus Hibana, and I'm sure a few others, have been referred to as ghost spiders, probably from their size and tendency to display whites, creams, tans, and yellow colorations. In short, they go by a bunch of names, many of which overlap with other unrelated spiders. They have poor eyesight, but are able to detect and consume the eggs of insects, like an arachnid version of the 1900s idea of oviraptors. They also eat just about any insect that they can catch. The tips of their legs end in tufted claws that allow them to scale vertical surfaces with ease. They're not purely herbivorous, as there's only one species of known spider that does that, but the ghost spiders will suck up sugary plant nectar whenever they find it. They also share a lot of similarities with the ground spiders, family Naphosidae, making all three unrelated groups wandering ground hunters. The Anyphanids can be found in the Americas, in Southern Africa, most of Europe, and some of the Middle East, as well as parts of India, Korea, Japan, and Southern Australia. The group, being nearly worldwide, is massive, holding 614 species and 57 genera and counting. Despite being worldwide in distribution and numbering over a thousand in species diversity, both the sack spiders and the anyphanid sack spiders lack a ton of easily accessible literature on them that deals with super cool bits of anatomical information. They're kinda boring, really. They appear most like the average spider you see around your house, but some can give off some strong trapdoor spider vibes, and I think that's super valid. So, with three groups of ground spiders sharing a lot of characteristics with one another, and two groups of sack-weaving spiders, how can you tell them apart? Super easy, actually. The ground spiders, family Naphosidae, can be told apart from the others in having oval eyes. The anyphanid ghost spiders have round eyes. Most spiders have eight eyes, right? The arrangement, size, and shape of the eyes can help tell different species apart. In the case of these wandering hunter spiders, the frontmost pair of eyes of the ghost spiders of Anyphanidae are the smallest. The Clubionid sack spider's front pair of eyes are usually much larger than the others. The bigger giveaway of the Anyphanid ghost spiders is their respiratory system. Spiders use spiracles, or holes, on their sides to allow air into their trachea to breathe through book lungs. In spiders that look like the anyphanids, the spiracle is located near the spinnerets, that silk-squirting butt end. In these ghost spiders, that spiracle is actually near the center of the abdomen. So what the hell is that supposed to mean? This is particularly what makes these spiders cooler than you'd think by just looking at them. The weird placement of the spiracle means a lot more on the inside. 
The breathing system of these spiders provide clues on their natural history. The tracheae are wider in the ghost spiders than the sac spiders. This is possibly due to the more active lifestyle of the ghost spiders compared to the sac spiders. They love to zoom around all fast-like. Turns out the males tend to have much larger tracheae than females. In order to conduct their vigorous courtship displays, they need to breathe more and better, so bigger tubes help them do that. For example, males of the Enifena accentuata species vibrate their abdomens up and down fast enough to create a blur of motion. How sexy. Sac spiders, on the other hand, are described as sluggish quarters. Wah, wah. Ghost spiders for spooky month. What next? What more might crawl out of the shadows to intrigue and frighten? Just wait and see. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.